I got brandy some too, and she didn't wear. I'm not trying to kill all my brand deals by wearing weed slippers. You know what I'm saying? Oh, true. Gotta well, be PC. Weed is my brand. <laughs> and if you don't like it, too bad. Hey, stoners. Welcome to, I don't even know what episode. Our pre-Grammy party. Of our vodcast. Yes, our vodcast. That word still makes me laugh. But yeah, this is a vodcast now, which is strange. Very strange. Um, but yeah, this is a pre-Grammy episode. The Grammys are this week, which is so exciting. Um, I'm in LA, obvi, for Grammy week because my sister is nominated for so many awards and I'm just so proud. Um, Mom, you've been to the Grammys before. Right? I've been to the Grammys a lot. How many times have you been to the Grammys? More than I can count on one hand. Really? So, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So you really don't know how many times. You can't count. At least five. That's a lot. That is a lot. What was your favorite Grammys red carpet look? It mm. was like a black leather pant with a black leather boot. And I can't remember what the top of the outfit was, but Lori Rodkin had me let me borrow so much jewelry mm. it was so sick and it just like i could have just had nothing on except lori rodkin and it would have just been a sleigh because she's so fab so it had to be that because the jewelry was just so nuts mm. um so i think that was it okay do you know what you're wearing this year i do but i can't tell why because i i'll tell you later <laughs> I guess we gotta wait and see. But give I, us a hint. Is it a dress? Is it pants? It's it's a dress. I oh. think I think I think that I'm gonna wear vintage Alaya. Oh, yes. excuse me. That's what I think I'm gonna wear. But we'll see. Okay. So it was a secret, and now it's not. Um. Well. Um. There's a little bit more of a secret that I really can't tell. Okay. I got it. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Um. Any like standout stories from the Grammys that you can think of, like your experience being there? Like, did anything crazy happen at any of the Grammys? I'm trying to think. I don't really think so. Like, I know this wasn't the Grammys. <clears throat> I don't think. I think it was the VMAs. But, like, the Kanye Taylor moment. Like, was there anything like that in any of the Grammys you've been to? What was? is I guess no. No? I don't think so. I feel like it's always the VMAs that are more of crazy well, moments. isn't that the truth? Like, the Grammys, you know, are very she-she, and you're supposed to be on your best behavior. Mm -hmm. Are the Grammys, like, sit-down dinner type vibe? No. Oh, it's not. That's no. good. I hate those. But, uh, you know, there's so many pre-Grammy parties, mm -hmm. and it's a whole week. My favorite thing about the Grammys is the Clive Davis party. It's fun. I went twice, <laughs> and... I remember the one year we went, like, Rihanna was over, like, to our left, uh, and uh, Chris Christopherson was to our right. Oh, and it that, was, was, that was the biggest moment ever. So iconic. Uh, okay, so I literally have very few people, like, that, like I, fangirl that I kind of fangirl over. And um, we were with hanging with Jared Leto. Oh, yeah. And it was me, you, and Molly, and Jared, and we were all talking. That, oh, no, it was me and Molly and Jared. And then Brandy comes over, and it's like, Mom. You are not going to believe who's here. And I, I'm like, who, who? And she's like, Chris Christopherson. And I literally <laughs> lost my mind. She's I'm like, like Brandy, take who? me. Oh, we went over. And like, sometimes you meet celebrities that you love. And sometimes it's disappointing mm -hmm. because they're not so nice or, you know, whatever. Very true. And um, we walked over to Chris and he stood up. And he how long he talked to us for the longest time. He really did. He was so nice. He was so nice. And his wife was sitting at his at the table. And all of a sudden he looked and he goes, We better wrap this up before my wife kicks my ass and yours. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> That's too good. And um, but it was like one of my favorite moments of people that I've met. Mm -hmm. It was very cool. Yeah. I gotta say, you're pretty ballsy with just like going up to somebody you don't know and saying hi. I am. You re it's shocking, really. Because I think it's because most of the time, like, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, but that was. But that one was. 
and, and you did it. But I think you did it because you had actually spoken to him on the red carpet. Oh, yeah, I did. And you said, hey, we just met on the red carpet, uh-huh. and this is my mom. That and, is true. Yeah. So that was easy. So that was easy. I am such a wimp, though. I will not go talk to anyone. R- I, don't, really? I am such a wimp. I'm like, I can't do it. It's too awkward. Like, I don't know. But, like, on our, we were flying to, to L.A. a couple days ago, and Lana Del Rey was on our flight. And... <sighs> Mother was like trying to hightail it up there to say hello. And we were all like, don't you dare. Stop it. Stop it right now. Okay. And you wanted to go have a chit chat. I was going to. But <laughs> honestly, I am such a fan of hers. I know. Like it is not OK. I, I listen to Lana every single day, mm-hmm. every single day. And when I first met Dom, his daughter lived in Australia and she ended up r- probably like maybe a month after I started dating him. She moved back and moved in with him. But I never, like, even summertime sadness, I really didn't listen to Lana. Mm. And so when Audrey came back, she said, have you heard this record? And it was at a time that we were going to decorate Dom's house, her and I, and we we never stopped listening to Lana over and over and over. And I felt like that's why we really bonded. And so now I'm such a fangirl. I was scared to go up. I was going to <laughs> until Molly was like, Mom, please do not embarrass me. Please do not embarrass me in front of Lana. She's like, and I was like, I know, but I love her. I know. Even though I was with her on the set of when they did the Angel video, her oh, and Ariana. But, and I talked to her for a second, but I hadn't, I hadn't become such a crazed fan at that point. Got it. Yeah. It's so funny. I would have not even recognized, I mean, I'm not as much of a fan, I guess, but I would have never even known that that was her, even if I was sitting next to her. I don't think I would have realized. And it makes you think, like, I feel like celebrities, like, they're, I feel like they're probably flying with us all the time. Like, as much as I travel, I bet there's celebs in first class all the freaking time. And I don't even know because I'm that oblivious. You really are. I really, truly am. I like Audrey's the one, like Audrey, like we, we had already, was Audrey on before? No, Audrey came on after us. Yeah, she did. No. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, she came on yeah. after us. And literally, she walks about my, by my seat and goes, she goes, Tish, I'm crying. Lana's <laughs> on, the, on the first row. And I'm like, I, I didn't see her either. Yeah, I wouldn't have even seen her. But, um, and we were all, had just gotten on. And then I was like, I'm going to go say hi. I'm going to go tell her that I love her. <laughs> and then I was, and then when Molly said, Mom, please do not embarrass me, I did think, okay, it's nuts. I'm yeah, not going to say anything. Yeah. But. I love you, Lana. Insane. Forever. She's my favorite. <laughs> okay, well, um, let's stick with the Grammys theme okay. here. Okay, so Off Limits is one of our favorite segments. Yes, it is. So I thought in honor of the Grammys and this being Music Week, I thought we could do like a different take on Off Limits this week mm-hmm. and give the stoners some music recs, hmm. but a past, a present, and a future artist or album that you love that you want to share with the stoners. You could say Chris Christopherson, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to let you say that because that's too easy. No, but that's one of my favorite albums. <laughs> it is. I mean, honestly, like for a record that I think every song on it, mm-hmm. like it's something the stoners could listen to. And it's not just one or two songs. Like it's so the whole entire album is magical. Mm-hmm. And it's Sunday morning coming down. And it was just the coolest record. And so I, I literally am picking that one. Okay. And then right now, present. Present. Honestly, it's not that present, but it's my present, and it's Norman fucking Rockwell by Lana. <laughs> like I listen, I listen to something off that record every single day. Love that. Future. Yeah. Is there like um like a new artist that's putting music out, or like an artist? That you, that you already love that's about going to put an album out next year that you're excited about or anything like that. Besides my wife. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I literally um, knew it. I, maybe Adele. Oh. I love Adele. And honestly, I think I love Adele the most because it's kind of the same with Lana. Mm-hmm. Like, every single, like, I'm going to love every single song. Yeah. Okay, love that. Yeah. Nice. Do I, do I have to go to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, I probably need to. He has so many albums I love that I probably need to look at my Spotify really quickly and see what I want to talk about. But... 
You never got into Ryan Adams, did you? No. I, I feel like that was just like, I don't know. The, it was like a millennial thing. Yeah. Like, I feel like that, like, I don't know why. I really think you would love him if you would listen to uh-huh. him. Um, It's that, like, like a little, like, Americana, like, gritty. A, it's like hipster country or hipster Americana. It sounds right up my alley. It is, it is up your alley, and his voice is freaking amazing. I was such a massive, massive Brian Adams fan. I've seen him play two or three times. I saw him with the Ryman which is one of my favorite venues. And I saw him at the Walt Disney Concert Hall here in LA. Really? And it was, and it actually, it's funny because him playing that show there, it was like a broken down set. And he talked a lot in between songs, told I stories, love that. made jokes. And it kind of reminds me of what Miley's doing at the Chateau. Uh, I'm where it's sure. almost like, not a variety show, but like, it almost is like, do you remember when they did like Behind the Music on VH1? Yes. Remember we, did you go with me to see Rob Thomas do that? No, but I wish I would have. It would've. was sickening because, like, the, the bands play their songs, but then they, like, tell stories in between each one about, like, what inspired it or, like, stories when they were writing it or whatever. And it was just really, really cool. And Ryan Adams did that at the Walt Disney Concert Hall, and it was so sickening. Um, Honestly, if you like listening to live albums. Yeah. He did a live at Carnegie Hall album. He's actually got a couple of those because he's played it so much, but. He plays like all the hits and it's just so good. And you do hear him like talk a little bit in between songs. Um, The other album by of his that's just phenomenal is Heartbreaker. Mm -hmm. It's so, so, so good. Okay. So by the way, that is another record is what was the record called that had 3 a.m.? Was it called 3 a.m.? Because no, I don't don't think think it was. Let me look. But that record is another record that every single solitary song is amazing. And it, the album's called Yourself or Someone Like You. Uh, it was just, it was perfection. And Rob Thomas, we went to see him in concert. Remember, we went to a match. I've box. seen him a few times. Oh, my God. He sounds identical to his records. I know. Like, his voice is, like, so insane. I'm completely obsessed. A present music artist that I listen to that the stoners need to know about. And honestly, you probably, too. Um, do you ever listen to Ryan Bingham? I've never heard of him. A lot of Ryans, I guess, on my playlist. There's just a lot of Ryans in the world. Can we just say that for one there second? There really are. Um, Ryan Bingham, he's an actor on Yellowstone, but he's been mm. a musician for, like, way, way, way Oh, longer. I bet I know who he is. You do. The beard. Does he have a beard on Yellowstone? They all have beards. I, I, but he plays in Yellowstone. Yes, he does. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um. So he is an incredible musician, and he put out an album this year called Watch Out for the Wolf. Mm. And he's so, 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 so good. Um, he actually was playing a show in Vegas last weekend, the same night as me. So I couldn't go and I was devastated because I would love to see him live. Um, so that would be my present recommendation. And then future. Okay. I know this is crazy, but I'm telling you guys, Post Malone is going to put out a country album. Oh, I can tell. And I can't wait for that. I, I think that's great for him. I do too. He's so talented. I'm sorry. I think we talked about this when it happened, but at the CMA Awards last year, he played with Morgan Wallen and Hardy and he blew them out of the water. Like he was so, so good. So I am so excited for Posty to go country. That sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, is he living in Nashville or he, he's here I a lot? I see. I don't know, actually. Um, but, you know, he's made a lot of changes in his life. He's sober now. I think wow. he just had a kid. Am I right about that? I don't know. Fact check me. Yes. Apparently. Yes. Like he's definitely like um, growing up, you know? Yeah. So well, I think that's, that's so great because cool. he's so talented. Yeah, I agree. Well, should we move on to some DRMTs? Let's love some DRMTs. Yes. It's so great now because the DRMTs are videos that we okay, have to I watch. Love I love that so much. This is Susanna from Poland. Right now I'm walking with my neighbor's dog, as you can see. Um, but I have two questions for you. I love your podcast, by the way. Uh, I've been wondering, since your family's so famous, I would say, and all of you working in the um, entertainment industry, I've been wondering, uh, the first part of the question is to Brandy, have you ever felt the pressure of being compared to the other siblings, your other siblings? Have you ever felt like, because obviously people define success differently. So, you know, your sister's success, for example, is completely different to your own success, if you know what I mean. So, have you ever felt the pressure? And Tish, question to you. If there was um, a certain pressure, 
how did you cope with it did do you have a, a solution that you can share because i have a younger brother and although we're not famous as you are and we do not have the the press writing about us but i feel like we both have been affected by the pressure you know just being compared to your sibling how do you cope with it hope you're having a great day and love listening to you guys bye she's so cute she's too cute love her i love her too did she say poland poland okay so i've actually heard poland is so i thought you were gonna say i've been there (laughs) no (laughs) i've not been there but i've heard it's amazing I don't know anything about Poland. Well, maybe we should but travel. There. I was thinking as she was walking around in that video that it looks an awful lot like Franklin. It is with the gorgeous. wood, like yeah, the, tree, yeah. the trees in the woods. It's so pretty. Yeah, it looks a lot like that. Um, okay, so I, as, even though this is DMT, I guess I'll go first. Um, definitely, obviously, like si- sibling rivalry and and comparison and all that is. I think it's a thing for anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, mm-hmm. Miley's success is so once in a lifetime that there's that's never happening twice especially in one family like it's just not and so like in a way I don't feel the pressure because of that it's Mm -hmm. like I not only could I never have that type of insane success like I almost don't want it like my goals are just different um and so I think even though like I wouldn't call it the pressure to be as successful if anything I think it's super inspiring Mm -hmm. and that's kind of how I see it and it almost helps me set a standard for what I do which can be a pro and a con like for instance like if i like i used to be in a band right and so when we would release music um there was i guess you could call it the pressure of not wanting to put out anything that wasn't great because my what miley does is so great and i do like people are going to compare you you know even though it's they shouldn't because it's different totally different music it's totally different things like there is that pressure in a sense to put out only what's great but i also like that because it makes you be great Yes, you know, it's like totally it sets a good standard to not just like put out mediocre stuff, yeah. you know, as a creative. So I don't mind that pressure. And I think like my goals are just different. Like yeah. my leave since she was little has wanted to be a freaking pop star. Yep. Like she like that's just all she's ever wanted. And for me, like, I don't want that. And really, it's not the I don't really fame is not ever something that I've wanted. Yeah. Truly like my goals are just to be able to like make a like a make the sort of living for myself like make enough money or whatever it is to like just have the life that I want and the life that I want is just to like have animals and have a farm <laughs> and get to travel to cool places. Like those are my goals, right? It's not about like being the best artist in the world or being the most famous in the world or anything like that. So I think for me, it's just different. And yeah. I, I don't really feel I wouldn't call it pressure as much as like, I appreciate the creative standard that she set. Right. So but I do think I think all of us would have different answers to that. You know, like it would be really interesting actually to save this for when Tr- Wick Trace comes on the pod totally. and kind of ask him that question because he's also in music and to see what he would respond with, you know. It, well, he we talked about it one day, like while I was home at Christmas, and he kind of said the same thing you did. Like, there's never ever been a time that he was jealous of Miley's success. Mm-hmm. Like, he was like truly never. He goes, it always just inspired me to go and do, be the best I can be and and do something I truly love. Because Trace is like that. He's always loved music mm-hmm. and always wanted to be in the music business. And I always say this, like. They sold 4 million records, Metro Station. Yeah. And Shake It was so incredibly massive. And, you know, now I'm sure when Trace looks at that compared to, like, Molly's success, you know, that doesn't seem as big as it would if it were just somebody in a family of, no, you know, people not in this business. Mm -hmm. And so I think that has to be hard because that's a huge success. Right. You know, and... I don't know. It's just I have never kind of understood, you know, all the sibling rivalry because I I was an only child. Right. And so I never really understood that. But I also see in so many situations besides, you know, our family, I think there's so much sibling rivalry and pressure to be as successful as the whatever sibling in the family, you know? Yeah. And I think that would be super hard. I think it would be the hardest if like you and your sibling did the same exact same thing. Like if there were two doctors in the family or two lawyers, whatever it is, you know? So I think like, I think 
my advice would be to just like have your own thing, yeah. you know, and um, it's so freaking cheesy and I hate cheese more than anyone, but comparison is the thief of joy and it's just, <laughs> it's just true. I hate cheesy shit, but it is true. I've like, actually never heard that. That's the, good. <laughs> yes, you have. That's like a very common saying, but it's true. And, uh, and I think about that a lot, like with social media, mm. because it's very easy to get on Instagram and compare what Ugh. someone else is doing to what you're doing. And the minute you start doing that is when like, it sucks the joy out of yes. your like whatever you're doing or not doing because like you're comparing yourself to somebody else, you know. That that to me feels like what Instagram is. It is, yeah. And 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 I'm not gonna lie, like sometimes I catch myself looking at other DJs and their careers and what they're doing, and I start doing that, and I'm like, well, I should be doing what they're doing, and I have to stop myself because then that stops like that stops me from like being able to take pride in what I am doing or to like. You know, if you if I look at what I'm doing objectively, I'm actually doing pretty freaking great. Exactly. But if I start comparing myself to other people, then I start questioning it, and that's not good. So I definitely try to like yeah. not do that as much as possible because I do think no matter if it's relationships, friendships, work, whatever it is, if you start comparing what you're doing to other people, it's never it never has a positive effect. So true. Ever look at you all grown up, <laughs> such an adult, <laughs> such an adult. <laughs> Um, okay. The next question is a, a DM. So no video, just a DM. This one's a DM and this one's for you. Are you ready? I am ready. Tish, can you please talk more about your early menopause oh, and the Lord. hormones you're starting? I'm 45 and I've been struggling. Women's health is just so under-researched, true, and we need more women to talk about it. What were your symptoms when you went through it? What did the extra do for you, if anything? I'm assuming the hormones. What prompted you to go get your hormones checked now? And what are they doing for you today? Please, please, please. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I don't think I had a lot of symptoms, which um, people are going to hate me because I think. Oh, I, no, no. Hold it, you. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm getting there. I plenty. Like I didn't do the hot flash or the weight gain. Not and, the weight gain. Or I didn't have hot flashes. I feel like I remember you being hot sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like maybe you did. Really? Yeah. Okay. I don't remember those. But what I do remember is I was out of my mind. Yeah, and absolutely. honestly, I did not know why I was crazy at all. And you were in complete denial. Complete denial. <laughs> like, I really did have a psychologic, like, some type of crazy psychos. Yes, you did. <laughs> the symptoms were the Mercedes convertible. In oh, the my God. I got the Mercedes convertible. That stopped <laughs> Like crazy. It was insane. I literally, like, it was a true midlife crisis. Uh -huh. The $180,000 horse she brought back from Washington, D.C. Yeah. for me. It was that like, was I just lost it. I, for, and, and then I forget how I found out. I guess I just went to the doctor for a normal thing. And they were and like. you had already been through it, right? And I was at the end uh -huh. of, of menopause. And guys, I was 42. Yeah, that's so young. Like, it was so young. Um, but I, as you know, I'm adopted. And I found out that my birth mom had had a hysterectomy at, like, 36. That's and crazy. so I think, I don't know. But anyway, so I went, to, went through menopause very early <laughs> mm -hmm. and really just had the midlife. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I honestly, it's been pretty easy for me. And the only reason, so recently, not the rest of us. I mean, it was crazy, but the, like recently, because as we all remember, like I said a couple of years ago, I did have a complete breakdown. Mm -hmm. But I was going through a divorce and I'd lost my mom, but it was like a whole nother level of like, like for about, I'd say a couple months mm -hmm, for sure. Um, and Molly and Dr. Amon tested my heart hormones, not even joking, they were zero. Like, I don't have any <laughs> that I, since I don't have symptoms, I don't take anything for it. I never have. But and I thought you started using that cream. No, I haven't been using it. You ditched it? I ditched it all. Interesting. Um, Did you feel a difference when you used that? No. You didn't notice any difference at no. all? No. Huh. I really didn't. And so I've just been one of those people that don't need to do the hormone thing. 
don't want to do the hormone. No, thing. but she why? Might be needing it. And also because hormones, I mean, sometimes I think they have great effects, but I also think they can cause problems. I could see that. I don't know what. Mm-hmm. I think like used to they they go back and forth. But at right. one time, if it was like if you took hormones, it could cause breast cancer, mm-hmm. or you know. And then I'm like, well. Why would I do that? I feel like we could have an expert on this topic. We and should. That would be really lovely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe even Meg. She's just so smart about everything. Yeah. How, and then she could tr- help treat it like without chemicals. That would be great. Let's get Meg on. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. We have <clears throat> one more DMT, and this is actually a high design question. Right. So we've got the video, which we love a visual. I love a so visual. Let's check that out. What's up, Tish and Brandy? First of all, y'all rock. I always listen to you guys as I'm falling asleep. And then I have dreams that we're best friends. So um, <laughs> hi, best friends. But I have a high design question. So this is our bedroom as of current. Um, this rent or this condo will eventually be a rental. So I don't want to put a ton of time into mm. it. But I just feel like this, our entire place is like one color. Um, and I don't know what other color, like, I'm so scared of color. Can you tell? Cause everything's I already know neutral, what to do. but I love like these rich wood colors. I'm very earthy. I don't like this wall, but, um, this is what's on there right now. I'd like to put some like big picture frames on it. Um, but in like maybe some molding, but like what color, um, you know, we only live in like 1600 square feet. No, no, no. 1,100 square feet. So it's just like, I don't want to make the space feel any smaller, but I want something moody. Okay. That's what we got. Bye. <laughs> I love her. I'm obsessed with our stuff. The fact that she just goes, bye. It's too good. It is so good. Audrey Purcell is good. She started that. She did Making start that. Making fun of me. She Bye. did. Uh, yep. And she also came up with the Tish Lorette. She did. Audrey's good. Yeah, she is good. Yeah. Um. Okay, so you know what I would do? And here's what? the thing. It, yes, it's a rental, but it's this is so cheap. I love that the har headboard is arched. Me too. And it so it already has that. And it's but I think to make it more interesting, what if they did the diagonal? Yeah. And just painted, you know, tape it off diagonally, that whole wall, mm-hmm. and then paint the bottom half a pretty color. That would be cool. And I think with the arch, it'll just be so interesting and cool. And because I am not into accent walls anymore. I like, know you're I, right. I, like a whole colored accent wall, I just can't do that anymore. It just seems dated. It is. But like the diagonal with that arch headboard would be so cute. And then if you do have to paint it back, you just... It's well, it sounded it the way she said it made me think they own that condo and they're gonna rent it out. Oh well, that would still be so cute. Is what I I mean maybe I'm wrong, but that was how I took that. The other thing that she could do if she didn't want to do a diagonal is, and I love this idea too, how they have the arched headboard. Yep. What if she just did another huge arch? Yep. You know, mm-hmm. like what just color? in the middle. Because I agree, she needs some color. I feel there. like it could be that terracotta. That's what I was thinking. You know, or even the color you just painted your um, office. Your office. My closet. It's almost like this mauve pink. It's so sick. It's, it's like a dusty rose. Sick. Yeah, but sometimes it doesn't even look pink. Sometimes it, like, depending on the light that's hitting it in the day, it kind of changes color. That'd be gorgeous with that headboard. It is really pretty. I did just paint three rooms in my house, and they're all, like, the prettiest earthy colors. They are. That aren't, like, they're not too overdone. So I'll post those because... I I do think you could you can put some color in there that's not bright or overwhelming. Yes. Like you can do some greens, some browns, some so terracotta, pretty. some clays. Even the color you did, um, the the pretty green. Yeah. Would be so pretty in an arch with that. Either way, to the diagonal or the arch. Mm-hmm. So pretty. But I definitely noticed a couple of things in the room that she bought that are also white that could like her lamps were white. Like I oh. feel like she could even go and get like like a cheap lamp from Target that's not white. Or even if you wanted yeah. to do like gold or something. And so honestly, you, you can paint up. anything. Mm-hmm. I have spray painted so many That's lamps. True. Like just spray paint them. Yeah. And the rug too was yep. also like white and gray. Yeah. So and a rug is the easiest way to add color. Absolutely. The easiest way to add color. Yep. And there, we like, there's a couple places where we get good cheap rugs. Rugs USA. Yes. What's the other? There's one more. Even Overstock is so Overstock, good. Overstock, yeah. Um, um, but Rugs USA is the main one. Rugs that I, USA is bomb. Yeah, it really is. And they have tons of good color. I do rugs. think, though, yes, those paint the lamps, do something on that back wall. I think that would add so much. Yeah, I agree. So, Cute. Yeah. yeah. 
She was too cute. And then send us pics. Yeah, have to see. Are you ready for the next? I'm segment? scared. It's truth or talk. Oh yay! <laughs> this is my favorite segment. You haven't really been smoking weed. That's because you and Sam told me <laughs> <laughs> that I. They told me I was a mess last week and I'm not allowed to be crazy. Maybe you should take a little puffy puff before we get started here. But Have I been normal today? Yeah, too no. normal. No, not too normal. Uh, a little too normal if you ask me. Um, all right, so um, if you guys don't know, Truth or Toke is where we ask each other questions and we can either answer the question or drink or... Both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want me to go first? Sure. If you could burn one thing in Dom's closet, what would it be? Oh, she. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. And he just got him recently, so I I'm couldn't scared. say. But, like, I'm not a big, like, label person. Right. Like, I think he got something that said Fila real big oh, or Adidas real big. <laughs> um, and I just like him and, like, you know me, I'm a very, like, a white V-neck yep. or a gray V-neck on him mm -hmm. is my ultimate favorite. So probably shirts with things on it. Graphics. Yeah. Yeah. As Molly would say, didn't we have a song about that? Uh, oh, well, just moving not on. Sure. <laughs> um, yes, rooting for my baby. Okay. Yeah. You read me one? Oh, yes. I'll go easy on you at first. Okay. What was your last lie all about? I don't lie much. I got to say. Is that true? It is true. Because let me tell you why. So my last lie, this is not that juicy. But my best friend Kirsten got engaged a few months ago. That's the boring one. But it is, it's true. And I had to lie to her over and over and over and it tore me up. <laughs> it did. I was like, I, I really like, this is how I know I don't lie a lot because it was really hard for me. It really was. That was such a boring. I'm trying to think if there was anything else, but I like lied over and over. And the scary thing is she said I was really good at it. <laughs> so maybe. I don't know. Uh, now I'm scared. Maybe I lie all the time, but I'm just so good at it. I don't know. Oh God, I hope. I tr you know what? I tried to lie to Miley, but it didn't work. About what? <laughs> when um, <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid. But you got so you guys all came. Like everybody stayed at my house for a little bit in December. Everybody came to visit me, and everybody was staying. And you guys were all packing up. And like, oh, I remember. Per usual, everyone somehow accumulates all kinds of shit they don't need. And Miley was like, "Do you have an extra suitcase I could take?" And I didn't want her to take one of my suitcases because I'll never get it back. And so I lied. I <laughs> know uh, she knew you were lying too. And I mean, obviously, I have suitcases. That's the thing. Yeah. And so I was like, "Yeah, no, sorry," and I like, ran away. And then she comes back and she's, "Are you sure you don't have another suitcase? Let me go look in your closet." I'm like, "Okay, fine, 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 fine." Yeah, I've it was a, funny. I've got a suitcase. I'll never see it again. <laughs> Again. Never. Never again. No, I'll ship it back. I gave her the cheapie. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I did try to lie, though. Yeah, and it wasn't a good one because I knew you were lying. I mean, well, like, obviously I have suitcases. Like, that was, like, that was a dumb <laughs> thing for me to lie about because, like, I travel more than anybody. I've got suitcases. Exactly. I know. And I tried to pawn her off on you and take your suitcase. But and... I already had it. I know. <laughs> okay. That was it. Okay. Okay, next. I like that question. <laughs> I'll just. I'm scared. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing about our family? How do I pick one? I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, I would say cleaning out closets on Christmas Eve is pretty freaking weird. <laughs> that is one of Molly's favorite pastimes. That's pretty it's organizing. Freaking... But I don't know. What is we? Do you all think we're weird? <laughs> I mean, the fact that you're the biggest stoner on the face of the earth is probably the weirdest thing about our family. Oh, yeah, because, guys, I literally thought it was the devil well, for some not long. only that, but people are like, your mom smokes weed? Why is that funny? I don't because, get it. Because, like, moms don't smoke weed, mom. I think they do and just lie about <laughs> it. That's what I think. The weirdest thing. I can't really think of anything else. <sighs> Me either. Is your it turn? my turn? Oh, wait, is it my turn? Oh, yeah, it's your turn. My turn. What's your best celebrity impression? I don't do impressions. Good. Mine's you. Oh, I know. Like 100%. Uh, when I do the Tish accent, people just lose their minds and they're like, you are just too good at that. I don't have an impression. Miley? True. I mean, I was thinking more. I'm getting wild. <laughs> I don't think Miley does that. I do. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know. I don't have a celebrity impression. Oh, well, mine, mine's yours, and it's just too good. I mean, yeah, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm not good at that. What's the most rebellious thing you did as a teenager? There were too many. 
Probably. Too many. You and the Trans Am. Yeah. Literally, we did a photo shoot the other day, and we had to change clothes in the car, and she was like, <laughs> I did this all the time in the 80s. And I was like, why were you doing this? Because I wanted to show up to the club with looking perfect and not my my jeans couldn't be all stretched out for a, for a 30 minute ride to the club. Do they stretch out in 30 minutes? I felt like they did. I don't think so. Um, so I would literally get dressed in the car. I was thinking like when you first said it, I was thinking it was because Mammy wouldn't let you wear out of the house what you wanted to wear. But is that not true? No. Mammy loved it. Mammy was shape. like me with you guys. She's like, <laughs> that skirt's a little long. Do you want me to hem it? <laughs> <laughs> seriously it's too good and the funny thing was his mom was like such a christian like i've never heard her say a cuss word never. but when i was getting she's like you need to put on a little more makeup or like she was all about she was all about the glam sexy that's very true yeah did you do anything else rebellious me i really was well i mean i was rebellious i guess at but the not... time but now it just seems like so silly yeah. You know, like sneaking out of the house and doing those kind of things to go to. Now, listen, I was like, my, I was at rock shows. But you know what? Everybody else was on drugs but me. Okay. I did not do drugs ever. I did not smoke pot. I did not do drugs. I was at rock I would drink shows. a little bit. But honestly, I was just there. like, I was just there looking cute. <laughs> I didn't want to be like whacked out like that. Right. So <clears throat> I really wasn't that rebellious besides just going out and. The most rebellious thing I ever did was continue to date that boy when you told me I was not allowed. And, and you, I was right. You took away all everything you yes. possibly could. And I kept seeing him. Yep. And how'd that work out for you? It was fine. He's doing great now. Is he? He really is. Well, that makes me happy. I know. Because at like, the time he was a drug addict. I know, but I really feel like I was I was good for him. I feel like I helped him turn his life around. I do. Well, Brandy, that makes me so happy. I know, happy. and you tried to forbid me from seeing him, but I, he needed me. <laughs> I even snuck him in, th like, into the, my bedroom a few times. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. You are crazy. I know. See, I did not do stuff like that. Sure did. Dang. Sure did. No, I was. I don't but know. I never did drugs. And I don't do drugs now. And when I'm DJing at the club, for sure, everyone is on drugs, but not me. Yeah. We were just not like that. No, I just don't like that at all. Okay. Any more that you like? Oh, hold on. This This isn't truth or toke but it's what is your favorite thing to do in vegas when you're not performing eat <laughs> the food in vegas is so bomb i was gonna say shop i can't afford to shop in vegas it is last big. time i was there i went in cartier and tried on a watch just because i've never done that and it was like twenty six thousand dollars, and i was like who can do this i don't know but they everybody does i know but i don't know how <clears throat> but let me tell you what eating in vegas is where it at. And really? if you aren't going out to eat in vegas you are truly missing out on the vegas experience because all the food is amazing so like my residency is at the Wynn, which is the best hotel, and they have all the best food. I just ate at their brand new Japanese restaurant called Mizumi. Oh, my God. The ambiance, 10 out of 10. Food, 10 out of 10. Drinks, 10 out of 10. It was so good. It's like my favorite thing about going to Vegas is the food. It's so funny because you used to be so picky about food. I know. but And I'm still a little picky uh -huh. for sure. But I just lo I love the whole experience of like trying the food somewhere and like going out and like doing it. And it's just so fun. That, and, and this is like honestly through this podcast is where I think I figured out I'm an introvert <laughs> I'm serious because you don't like going out to dinner I just like none of like not one of the things that you said and that sounded good to me or fun have you ever tried yeah I think so and I don't like it I guess so it's just not my vibe I'm an introvert too though but Are being you? introverted doesn't mean you don't like to be social it just means that we've t we've been over this extroverted people get their energy from being around other people introverted people get their energy from being alone that's me so whatever it is that you need to go do to like fill up your cup and like get energy or like be so like oh, that's yeah, what totally it is. being alone so like some people are like so depressed like at home by themselves like and need other people to like liven them up and like make them feel whole again kind of thing uh -huh. i'm the opposite i love being around people i love to go out so super fun but i have to go home and be alone and that's when i'm like filling myself back up again okay so the crazy thing is is this i think this is a good le lesson for the stoners is i'm gonna drink even though we didn't do that okay great i honestly like spent so many years truly being terrified of being alone like 
And maybe it's because I'm adopted and it's some psychological thing. Possible. Like, I don't know, but terrified of being alone. And then during COVID happened. And really for four months, I was alone as alone could be. I freaking loved it. It's the best. And I, it was so good for me to have been abandoned <laughs> once again. Wonder why I'm afraid of being alone. I stick a turn. Um, and like, could, like, just was alone for the first time ever. No kids, nothing, just me. And I literally, I, I literally was not unhappy at all. I loved it. That's great. And so I feel like I just learned so much about myself then. Because I was always so fearful of that. And I'm really not anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of like, I would be okay with it. Mm -hmm. You did get a little teary in Nashville when MCZ talked about not being here so much. I did get teary about that. I did get teary about that. Maybe but you're not as I over think, it as you think. But I don't think, like, I do think. That if she went, uh -huh. now I wouldn't be as afraid. Right. I agree. And also because I would feel like I could now I'm like in a different place in my life where I could just hop on a plane and go mm -hmm. and not worry about crap at home. I, like I truly like on this trip to Nashville was so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, and like. I just know that Dom like because Dom was home. And, like, he was taking care of the dog. Like, he was functioning, mm -hmm. you know? And, like, I felt free to go. He I'm so... Fun. I mean, he literally was. <laughs> and, like, okay that I was going and having fun. Uh-huh. And it was so much fun. Yeah. And so I think I feel so much more freedom, too, mm. to just be me, that it's incredible. Well, I love that for you. Me, too. Cheers. Let's drink to that. Let, absolutely, let's drink to that. Okay. Okay, cheers. <laughs> well, I feel like that's a great place to end this episode. Really? Yeah. Okay, great. That was great. See, we have such a great balance of like, LOL, we're so silly, and then serious. Yeah. We have some depth to the podcast. I actually kind of like that. Same. Either like, we're being funny or we are getting deep. Or we're real serious. Yes. Yeah. Later, stoners. Bye. Bye. This podcast has been brought to you by Podcast Nation and Hopetown Entertainment.